Christian Caldwell and Javon Hardy are back deep to receive the kick. It will be Caldwell backing up and dropping the football at the two off the kick by Quinn Salwan. A big hit coming on Techman and a flag flies as Caldwell is wrestled down at the 11-yard line. I think that might be a block in the back. I would say so as well. I, I'm, I'm with you on that one, Andrew. And I think that you know he misjudged the ball a little bit. Probably would have been better to just let that bounce into the back of the end zone there. But when you pick it up from the two-yard line, that's uh, not a recipe for success when you're returning the ball on special teams. So that is the penalty. The block in the back. Looks like it's called on David Fleming for the hit on Dan Techman. Paul Colombo, the senior quarterback, starting things off. Second in pass efficiency in the PAC. Third in total offense. He'll start with the football under center. Two back set with Javon Hardy in the backfield. They will give to Hardy up the middle, splits through to about the 14-yard line where he is brought down. Yeah, definitely got some good size in the running game for Westminster as well. And when you package that ability with the offensive line, it's going to make for a very successful team. And, and really, the other thing about Colombo, too, is that they really haven't had to lean too heavily on him this season. You know, if he has to defer to the passing game, they do, and they have had success with that. So they were starting from the six. That's an eight-yard gain to the 14, second and two on the second play from scrimmage. They'll dump it out near side, intended for DeAndre Johnson. Career-high seven catches last week, but that one falls incomplete. Yeah, it's a team that likes to motion their receivers a lot, too, and I think especially when you're in a 3-4 scheme, it's definitely something that you have to pay attention to. But yeah, normally, nine times out of ten, that's a pass that Colombo puts right on the spot, but that one just a tad short. Connor Cox, Nick Henderson on the far side. Bryson Paulinelli on the near side with Johnson. Hardy in the backfield. Colombo drops back. He will look over the middle. Flushed out by Techman. He'll look to throw across the seam. Diving try by Johnson, but he can't haul it in, and it's fourth down. Well, that was the first time that we got to see the mobility of Paul Colombo. This is probably one of the reasons that they haven't allowed that many sexes. He's, he's a really... Uh, mobile quarterback and can get away from the pressure in a hurry, but uh, two rare incompletions by Colombo, a guy who is completing his passes at about 63%. That's not something you see every day, but a big break that the Spartans would be more than happy to get. An efficient week last week for Colombo, if not big on the numbers, 15 of 19, over 200 yards passing. The punt to Justin Fan is a short one, and it will be downed near the 50 by Westminster. The punt by Joe Salmon, the senior. And so the Spartans will take over. Senior quarterback Rob Kuda with his senior-laden offensive line. And Jacob Burke, a fellow senior, celebrating their last home regular season game at DeSanto Field and perhaps their last home game period here in Cleveland, depending on if the Spartans are lucky enough to get a home playoff bid, they got to get in first. First and 10 from the 45, the handoff is to Burke up the middle. Started on the 45, he gets near the 40. He'll give it a four yard gain on first down. Yeah, and Burke has had a really good month of October. Definitely hope that that success translates um, here into November. He has really been producing solid numbers and scoring a lot of touchdowns. 27 carries last week, a season high. They'll get the ball again up the middle. So they are going to really pressure what has been a stout run defense for Westminster. Third and one from the 36. Burke will get it again. He pushes forward and gets the yard to gain. It's a Spartan first down on three straight runs by Jacob Burke. Yeah, and they're going to give him forward progress on that, even though the Titans gave a pretty good uh, push back at the end, but I think that's a pretty good statement made there by Case, stating that we're, we think that we're better enough than you to just run the ball straight up the gut and get a first down on three plays, so good confidence for the Spartans going early. Three wides, Batali on the far side, Medved and Fan on the near. This time, Kuda will pass. Lots of pressure, good protection at the last minute. Now Kuda tries to find a window, 
barely got it in there to Spitali, but it's broken up. It was right in between Todd Jeter, the exceptional cornerback, and the strong safety Travis Loster, second down on the incompletion. Well, there was a lot that wasn't picturesque with this play. Kuda A, throwing off of his back foot, and B, throwing into a very congested area. Yes, there were two blue uniforms in the area, but a little confusion as to who was going to step up and, and get in the ball's way. For a second, he had good protection, then it dissolved. Now he'll run with the football on second and 10. Good gain near the first down. The sticks are at the 24. They'll spot the football two yards short. Kuda has a pretty good chance of becoming just the eighth player in school history with 2,000 career uh, rushing yards. So he needs about 135 in this game. If he has a Rob Kuda type day, he could get there. Third and short, no score in the first quarter. Hand off to Burke, that's the bread and butter. He powers up the middle and he has another Spartan first down. He's just been old reliable. Jacob Burke in his fourth year, just too big and too strong. The defense is gonna have to play a perfect play every single time to be able to deny him the first down sticks. I'll spot it at the 23. Same three wide receiver set with Aguilar and Burke in the backfield on the pistol snap. Fake handoff, toss out to Aguilar in the flat. He's pushed out by Loster near the 10. It's good for another first down. Yeah, you really just don't think how a, a fullback you know, can catch the ball out of the backfield, how that can have an effect on your, on your deep ball and, and the overall passing game. When you have a threat underneath that can catch the ball like Aguilar can, that really opens things up deep down the field. That is his 16th reception of the year, and for a fullback, he's only had seven carries. False start, though, on the line. I believe that was against Ryan Merlau, the right guard. That will back the Spartans up. First and 15. First down markers at the one. You know, Andrew, we talk about the discipline of the Spartans, especially on the offensive side. This is a team that just does not commit little penalties like this in the red zone. I mean, this is one of the best teams in the conference in terms of red zone execution. That was a, a rare false start by Case. Four wide set, Burke the lone setback. Kudo will rush it up the middle, slips through past the 10. He is gang tackled for a pretty good gain. Finally taken down by C.J. Armstrong, the middle linebacker, or the outside linebacker, and it's second down and six to go from the seven. And we see the offensive game plan by the Spartans is just really keeping it simple, just keeping it in between the tackles, and they're having some good success thus far, but we'll definitely want to put the ball in the end zone. Kuda on the option pitch. Burke gets the edge, jumps to the pylon. He's in. So many touchdowns for Burke, it's an option. Kuda makes the choice early to defer to his senior halfback and upended a little bit at the end, but that was fun. Burke, another touchdown. How many times has he done that this season? Touchdown number 14 for number 23. That leads the President's Athletic Conference. Carney all's kick, flags fly from both sidelines. Offside on Westminster. That will be declined. So the PAT is good. Seven to nothing Spartans. They take an early lead. The defense made the stop first after the kickoff that was bobbled by Christian Caldwell, the ensuing block in the back penalty, and then a three and out forced by the Case defense. Good field position. They only had to go 45 yards, and they do it with relative ease, Eddie. Yeah, they really did. It was a very typical Case Western Reserve drive. I mean, that was an offense that looked very confident despite the fact that this Westminster defense is probably going to be the best defense that they have faced all season long. But you know, even despite all of that and despite the fact that this will be their toughest challenge all year, it is so important just to remain confident and, and stick to what you do best. And that's what the Spartans have done on this first drive, and it results in seven points. Quinn Salwan to kick it away. Once again, Hardy and Caldwell are back to receive. 
They'll kick it toward Caldwell again. Makes the catch comfortably inside the 10. Runs it up the middle. He is met at about the 24-yard line. Good tackle made by the Spartan Zach Hurd. They'll spot it on the 23. Andrew, this is going to be a drive for Paul Colombo uh, and company quarterback for Westminster. They have to establish some type of a rhythm here. Two rare incompletions by Colombo, a guy who completes his passes at about 63, 64%. He's definitely going to want to build on that number. We get our first look at Dominique McKinley in the backfield, and he'll get the handoff off the right guard. Decent gain out to the 26. It's a gain of three. Again, that's Ian Henderson right in the middle getting involved. Cameron Brown, Dan Techman. They can get so much pressure with just blitzing three guys on every play. It's a matchup that really heavily favors Case with that defensive front. Cox, Paulinelli, and Johnson, the three split out wide. Dylan Goff, the tight end, and the handoff is to McKinley. Stumbles forward, taken down for close to another three-yard gain. Crossy on the tackle. And so many of these uh, Spartan tackles, you know, when the offensive play for the other team ends, it often results in multiple players bringing down the ball carrier. Spartans are a great team in terms of getting multiple hats uh, to the ball carrier every time. Third and four from the 29. Shotgun snap for Colombo. Looking near side, Paulinelli makes the catch. The first first down for the Titans out to the 40. The tackle's made by Crossy and Cannon. Just a pretty basic coming, uh, coming back uh, crossing route right there. Again, two Spartans in the area, but that's a really easy play for Colombo. He'll complete that every single time you give it to him. Bryson Paulinelli, a pretty good deep and middle yardage option, averaging over 26 yards a catch, or excuse me, over 26 yards a game on 17 receptions. Fumbled handoff, and it's Techman falling on it. Does he have it or does Colombo? Colombo comes up with it, and the ball was dropped initially by Cameron Brown, who looked to be all over it. Yeah, it was just a difficulty on the transfer right there. Cameron Brown had it for a moment, and I think Colombo might have gotten in there with his right hand and probably just pushed it loose, but that was enough for Westminster to get the ball back. So a disaster averted right there by the Titans, but it'll cost them some yardage at the very least. Westminster haunted by a fumble by McKinley last year in this matchup. Colombo rolling out to the right, now steps up, looking deep, pressure coming from Brown. Colombo backing up. He'll get rid of it and throw it to the sideline as Brown pancakes him. It'll be third and 15. But last year, the Spartans had to come back from 19 down, 15 nothing in the end of the first half. They were down 11 in the fourth quarter. They came all the way back. They took the lead, and Westminster was driving in the last minutes of the game with a chance to take the lead. And on the two-yard line with 39 seconds left, McKinley coughed it up, McMahon pounced on it, and the Spartans escaped with a win on the road. Colombo on third and 15. Goes deep near side, Bryson Paulinelli, incomplete. Caught it, but was pushed out of bounds, and it'll be fourth down. Well, on the play earlier, you know, it's pretty impressive from Colombo just to keep the play alive to try to get them something deep down the field. So they got the pass that they wanted right there, but you're just a little too close. Uh, to the Spartan sideline right there and, and too much uh, of the sideline right there. So another uh, defensive stand by the Spartans early. That's a good sign. Fan waiting for the punt. It is flubbed, but it hits a Spartan at the 45. It is recovered by Case, but that was close. So Case will take over on their own 45, and a, a quick correction. We are told number 15, who has been Javon Hardy, is not Javon Hardy. Number 15 this week is Zaire Williams, who had been number eight. So scratch all those Hardy handoffs. It was Williams on the return, and Williams on that first drive in the backfield. First and 10 for the Spartans, nonetheless. They lead 7-0 with Kuda in the shotgun. 
looking to throw. Deep left side, diving grab made. Giuseppe Orsini, and it's a first down. That's an incredibly athletic play, and Kuda puts the ball in a spot where he leads his receiver, putting it in a spot where only he can make a play on it, and an excellent diving catch. Now Burke gets through the middle to the end zone. Boy, and just like that, you've got a two-score game thanks to the strong running by Burke, and I think that that may have caught in Westminster a little off guard because we know that the Spartans love to race to the line of scrimmage and get the next play off. You have to be mentally prepared for how fast the Spartans want to run their offense, and they weren't that time. The Westminster just didn't see it coming, and Burke took a full advantage. 13 to nothing. Case on top. Make it 14. Ben Carniall through the uprights. We will take a look at the updated stats, but Jacob Burke coming into today only needed 95 rushing yards for 2,000 on his career. And he is awfully close. We'll get an update as soon as we can. 14-0 case. Let's take a look at the first play on this two-play drive that started it. Yeah, Spartans were definitely going to be aggressive early in the pass. That just really does not get better than that. A full extension diving play. And the best thing really about the Spartans receiving core, Andrew, is that any one of those receivers really has the athletic ability and the skill at the wide receiver position to make a great diving effort like that. Now it's DeAndre Johnson to receive the kick from Sal Juan. The Spartans get a hot start. Johnson wrapped up by Zach Hurd, his second special teams tackle this afternoon. Yeah, and this Spartan sideline is just absolutely loving what they are seeing right now. They are ready to defend their home turf in the last regular season game of the year fully prepared and out to an excellent start. Let's see if Colombo can get something going. The last drive stalled after a fumbled handoff. Lone man in the backfield, Zaire Williams. The fake give to him, pass out to the flat is too tall looking for Johnson, incomplete. When we are just not used to seeing this from senior quarterback Colombo having completed just one of his first five passes and a couple of these, including this one, and there's not really a, a blue uniform in the area, so that one is on Colombo. That's, that's a pass that you just have to complete, especially at this stage of your career. Second and 10 from the 17. Four wide set, again Williams the lone setback. Colombo gets through the middle, slips a tackle. He's out to the 30 before he's taken down. Boy, Zach Lyon almost hurdled the left tackle. Cameron Mika on that play to get in the backfield, but a good job to get through by Colombo. Yeah, and Colombo is a guy that will take off and run when he has to, has ran the ball 78 times in their games this year for almost 400 yards, so you definitely have to take into account the mobility of Paul Colombo in addition to his good passing skills. Check that, he jumped over Williams, and Williams did a nice job to upend him. Now Williams on the outside edge give. Finally pushed out by Cannon after a good first down gain. And a good job by Cannon to get him before any more yards were acquired there, but you know, Westminster moving the chains on the first two drives. You know Westminster didn't have much success in terms of accumulating first down. So, you know, they're already going to be on the field a little bit longer than they were in their previous two drives. So it seems they have made an adjustment or two. A little past the midway mark of the first quarter. Spartans have two touchdowns by Jacob Burke to lead 14-0. 50 yards rushing, by the way, for Burke. Option read, Colombo dropped in the backfield. And that's one of your best pass rushers on the squad, and if not in the conference, that's Cam Brown. Once he is in the backfield, 
That's a recipe six for success for the Spartans. It did not uh, phase him. Uh, the fake handoff right there. Colombo uh, dis disguised the ball pretty well right there, but Brown either way was able to make the stop behind the line. They're having some issues in transferring the football on they handoffs are. today. Third and six from the 35. Four wide set for Colombo, who feels the pressure coming. Steps up, passes toward Caldwell. Incomplete. Christian Caldwell was double covered. It was Crossy and Calhoun. Crossy almost had an interception, but it's fourth down. Yeah, and this pressure that the Spartans are, are giving to Colombo, it's working so far, Andrew. And we talked about the matchup of the Spartans' defensive line against Wentz-Mister's offensive line. I'd say the Spartans' defensive line is uh, winning that by a landslide, at least in the first three possessions. Fan back at his own 35. Joe Salmon with his third punt. And Fan didn't fair catch it. He is dropped at the 35-yard line. How about that tackle? It was made by Kimu Kim. Well, that's a bone bruising hit by Kimo Kim. And I'd say Fan just did a good job just to make sure that the ball didn't come out that time. Because most of the time, if you get hit that hard, that football is going to juggle around at least a little bit. But Fan was able to prevent that from happening. And the Spartans take over once again. Kim now one of the safeties. He's listed on the depth chart and on the roster as ATH athlete. He'll play anywhere on the field. Wide receiver, running back, safety, special teams. Kuda looking for Fan in between Kim and Aaron Pierce incomplete. You know, the scary thing, Andrew, is that the Spartans already have two touchdowns in their first couple possessions, and we really haven't seen a deep ball go for more than 25 yards yet uh, from, from Kuda. So that was really their first look at a deep ball from Kuda, and he led Fan just a tad too far. Four wide, second and 10. The deepest ball thrown to Giuseppe Orsini. Hand off, off left tackle. Gets a couple on second down. Orsini's went for 27 yards. Kuda now two of four passing. And we told you Burke, before that rush, 50 yards rushing. So entering this drive needs just 45 to get to 2,000 in his career. Third and six after that pickup of four yards from the 41. Hurd now switches places with Adam Zipko. Lone man on the far side, Orsini. DeFrancesco is the motion man. Kuda steps up. He'll look short. DeFrancesco makes the grab, but he's taken down shy of the sticks. Loster on the tackle. Helped out by Paul Gonzalez from linebacker, and it'll be fourth and short. The punting unit will come out. Yeah, that was the defensive stand that Westminster really needed. I mean, the Spartans have had crazy good success on their first two drives, so this was an absolute must for Westminster. And, and when you're giving up points, the last thing that you want is for your defense to stay on the field. So good job on their part to force a punt. Paulinelli and Johnson are back just outside of their own 15. It is Paulinelli to field it. Shifts a tackle and finally tripped up. He went more laterally than he went forward. Aaron Aguilar on the tackle. 14 nothing case, 440 left to go in the first quarter. This is a big game for the Spartans and the games to watch this week in the PAC for case. Obviously, they'll be paying attention to the Washington Jefferson at Geneva game that's going on right now. 15th ranked w &J, the other undefeated team in the PAC, but two other teams factor into the playoff picture and the tiebreaker scenarios. Colombo looks over the middle, pass caught, and a touchdown saving tackle by Cannon will prevent Connor Cox from a long touchdown reception. Well, and luckily, uh, Cannon is a pretty good open field tackler. Otherwise, that could have spelled problems for the Spartans. No help over the top from the safety. So luckily, he's able to grab a hold of the receiver and get him down by the lower half. But, you know, we talk about the tackling abilities of Cannon, and he has really elevated his game in his time in four years here. McKinley in the backfield. They will pitch to him. 
Off tackle left, splits up the middle. He's got running room down the right sideline. Calhoun chases him down. McKinley cuts back, and he's taken down at the 30. Great run by Dominique McKinley, and it took a couple of seniors in McMahon and Calhoun to take him down. With the success of McKinley this year, really only a matter of time and only a matter of one move, and you see him running left behind left tackle and left guard, but he cuts it back towards the middle of the field, and that's really what sprung him free for a big game. You have to bottle up Dominic McKinley because he is just one move away from bursting a big game. Dominant Dominique, first and 10 from the 29. McKinley no longer in the backfield. Now Colombo for Paulinelli, makes the grab inside the five. Taken down by Chrysis. Well, there was that pinpoint accuracy by Colombo. The receiver had a, a target right on his chest and Colombo puts it right on the money. And all of a sudden, Westminster, their offense is looking more alive than it did in the first three possessions. So they've uh, got a little flame here. Colombo, who averages just under 200 yards passing per game, having himself a nice drive here. Kimu Kim will line up in a wildcat formation with Zaire Williams to his left. Kim is met just outside the line of scrimmage by Calhoun and McMahon. Wrestled down from there on the first and goal run. It's a pretty good run defense by Case, and not only that, but they are an excellent red zone defense. So a touchdown here for Westminster is gonna be hard to come by, especially on the road. And the Spartans do such a good job of tackling in this area as well. Colin Reese, the guard, could only do so much. He picked up one tackler, but the Spartans were swarming to the gap. Kim again from the Wildcat, pushing forward near the goal line, almost lost the football. He's down at the one on the second down and goal run. And then we're gonna call him down by contact right there, but Westminster gets even closer. Get another pretty good look at it right here, but yes, clearly, clearly pretty, I think, down by contact there. Almost looked like he was starting to stretch for the pylon when he lost the football, but he was down. Kim again. He is met and dropped. Justin McMahon made first contact, and it's fourth down. Yeah, and as one of your leading tacklers, I think McMahon was going to take responsibility right there and say, I have to be the first guy to get to the ball carrier, and he was in a gang tackle to wrap it off, and now Westminster has uh, an early choice to make. They are going to keep the offense on the field, and they will go with Colombo back there. They tried three plays with Kimu Kim in the Wildcat. And they did not work well enough. They couldn't get three yards, and now they're backed up. Back to the three on fourth and goal. Two wide set, McKinley in the backfield, and a timeout called by Westminster, who did not like the look that they had. Bryson Paulinelli was out there along with Dylan Goff. Paulinelli the wide out, and Goff the tight end. And as we get our first timeout, we will step away for the first time. Anova Living is a modern, amenity-rich residential community located in Cleveland's Greater University Circle neighborhood, offering studio, one, and two-bedroom apartment homes. Enjoy all-inclusive living with convenient on-site shopping, 24-hour concierge services, a 24-hour fitness center, resident lounge, and more. All within close proximity to Case Western Reserve University. Anova Living online at anovaliving.com. After the timeout by Westminster, it's fourth and goal for the Titans from the Spartan three yard line. 118 to go in the first quarter. Case up 14 0. It had been first and goal from the three. They went with the Wildcat. Kimu Kim made three runs getting the direct snap and could not get the football in. Two wideouts, one tight end. Zaire Williams, the lone man in the backfield. They'll motion Johnson from right to left. Colombo on fourth down to the end zone. He finds DeAndre Johnson for the touchdown. Well, and it looked like it was going to be a pass from the start. Colombo keeps his eyes back towards the corner of the end zone, and this is the one 
normal formation play that they do decide to run, and it did work after the bizarre formation in the Wildcat didn't uh, get them a touchdown the first three, and this one here gets them into the end zone. So the point after touchdown attempt forthcoming. It is just inside the right upright from John Sybach, the freshman. And so it's 14 to seven Spartans. That was an interesting, not only formation, but play call by Westminster College and their offensive coordinator, Rich DeMeo, with that compact, tight set that they had with the two wideouts and the tight end, plus the motion that they had from DeAndre Johnson, Eddie, it almost looked like the Spartans could not find their coverage in time by the time the ball was snapped. Yeah, that, that's a pretty good description of that last play on your part, Andrew. I see a lot of um, finger pointing by the uh, Spartan linebackers, not so much to you know point the finger at any other player, but to try to get people in position. It's just a very tough uh, formation to prepare for at the time, considering that they saw the Wildcat type offense the first three times. So Westminster really did throw them a curveball right there, kind of kept Case on their heels, and, and it resulted in, uh, in six points. So Case leading 14 to seven now. Let's see if Westminster's terrific drive orchestrated by Colombo and finished off by Colombo and DeAndre Johnson can get them rolling a little bit after the Spartans had a raucous start. This is Chiquillo on the kickoff. Fielded by Calhoun, upended just past the 25. 110 left to go in the first quarter. A special thank you to all of the Case Western Reserve University sponsors, including the Intercontinental Hotel, located just minutes away from the Case campus. For more details, visit ichotelsgroup.com or call 1-800-IC-HOTELS. First and 10 from the 29. Kuda with the handoff, Burke up the middle, more running room, spins down with a first down at the 45 yard line. Yeah, the early success continuing for Jacob Burke. That's a very encouraging sign for the Spartans because of the run defense for Westminster that we talked about in the pregame there, a really good run defense, but Burke has been lightening them up thus far. Now on 70 yards rushing, Burke gets the carry again. It's his ninth of the day, and he'll get about four. Check that. They'll mark him down after a gain of three. Second and seven. Well, before Paul Colombo orchestrated that drive that got Westminster into the end zone, we were talking about the other games to watch for in the PAC this week that impact the Spartans. Thomas Moore hosting Teal. Grove City hosting Bethany. Thomas Moore already underway, as is... Grove City, they just got underway. Thomas Moore started at noon. We'll give you scoring updates on those. Second and seven. Kuda flushed out. Rolling right, and he will just throw it away. So it'll be third down. Before we give you the scores, why don't we give you the reasons why those games are important. We told you before that the Spartans are one of two undefeated teams in the PAC. It's them and it's Washington and Jefferson. Well, if those two teams remain tied at the end of the regular season for first place, then tiebreakers will decide the automatic qualifier and the conference champion. And one of those qualifiers is strength of schedule. Well, the Spartans didn't play Thomas Moore. WNJ did. And the Presidents didn't play Grove City, at least in a conference game. The Spartans did. So those two teams are the difference in strength of schedule. Kuda's pass over the middle on third down, batted down, and it'll be fourth down with six seconds left in the first quarter, the punting unit will come out. And to clarify that a little bit, basically if Thomas Moore finishes with a better record than Grove City and the Spartans and Presidents are tied at the end of the regular season, then Washington and Jefferson will get the conference championship, the automatic qualifier. And if Grove City finishes with the better record, then Case will win out. So it's just a little complicated. Fourth and seven. They will pass it, Salwan, out of the punt formation. He will find Zach Lyon 
of first down to the 25. How about that trickery? Wow, and what a great way to finish the quarter. That, that's the one thing that I loved about the Spartans offense and Derek Slash is that you just, you never know what they're gonna call. I mean, they're gonna call something aggressive when you least expect it. And, and, and Westminster, needless to say, wasn't looking for this, but how about this throw? by a normal punter. That was a totally disguised play and well executed by the Spartans. That really changes things a little bit after the last two of the Spartans' drives stalled out towards the end. The freshman, Quinn Salwan. How about that? End of the first quarter, we want to thank another Spartan sponsor. That's BoxCast, the official streaming video provider of Spartan Athletics. Find out more at BoxCast.com. Okay, updated on those scores that mean so much to the Spartans. Grove City and Bethany. It is six to nothing Bethany in the first quarter, so that doesn't help Case at all. And it looks like a scoreless game between Thomas Moore and Teal, unless they're having a little trouble updating those live stats out there. But a win by Thomas Moore and a loss for Grove City means that Thomas Moore would clinch the better record there at four and three in the conference. Grove City is at three and three. Getting ready for the start of the second quarter. Off the first down on the fake punt. Kuda drops back from his own 25. Looking deep, Justin Fan dives and makes the catch at the one yard line. Unbelievable. How do you like these last two plays? Really difficult to tell if, from this angle anyways, if Fan was even gonna have a chance at this ball because the defender is right there in front of him, but somehow, some way, Fan finds a way to reel it in, and he knew it right away. So it's first and goal. They'll spot it at the two. By the way, they do have an update on that teal game. Hand off left side. Jacob Burke is in for the third time this afternoon. For the third time in 15 minutes and 28 seconds. I mean, this just does not get better on Jacob Burke's park. I mean, he's part, he's had uh, touchdowns going right and now left and up the middle. Guy's just been a monster in the red zone. Touchdown number 16 on the ground for Burke. He's one of the best ever to do it for the Spartans at running back. Carniol's kick is good, 21-7 case. At halftime in the Thomas Moore Teal game, it is Thomas Moore 21, Teal 7. So things looking a little bit cloudy for the Spartans at the moment. They're controlling what they can control. But at the moment, the kind of ancillary factor is not going their way. Well, and Andrew, that's really the only thing that the Spartans can take care of is they can only take care of what they can control and they seem to be in total control uh, of this game here early on. You know, we talked about um, what we were expecting against that Westminster run defense, but thus far, uh, Jacob Burke has just been tearing it up. You know, absolutely uh, tremendous beginning to this game um, for Burke. I don't think I've ever seen him score three touchdowns that quickly in a game. I mean, he's scored three touchdowns plus several times, but never at this rate. DeAndre Johnson will receive the kick. Gets it out near the 30. He has really been the catalyst to this offense. As much as Rob Kuda might be the face of the offense, Jacob Burke has carried an unbelievable workload this year, especially considering that Kuda has not run as much as he has in years past. I would say that, that Burke's success is probably a big, big reason for why Kuda has not had to take off and run the football. Now, if the defense gives him an opportunity, then sure, you know, Kuda's going to take advantage of it. But, you know, they, they love to stick to those those bread and butter plays. You know, those very fundamental uh, running the ball in between the tackles, just keeping it simple but sweet. 
and that's gotten the Spartan success. Johnson in the flat on first down. Calhoun tries to rip it from his grasps, but he'll get a five yard gain to the 35 yard line. Well, that's uh, really what I love about this veteran Spartan secondary unit. They are, they're not uh, really uh, content with just making a tackle in the open field. You know, their ultimate goal is to try to rip the ball loose on every single play that they can, and a lot of that comes uh, uh, from the uh, emotion and the uh, team leadership of Cody Calhoun. He just goes for the ball on every single play. While we were talking about Burke, he's averaging seven and a half yards per carry, 75 yards on 10 carries. This is Zaire Williams shifting through the middle. He has a first down past midfield. Well, you definitely like the, the combination of size and speed for Williams. I mean, this guy just looks like a guy that was born to run the football. And we've only seen him break loose a couple of times. The Spartans have been able to bottle him up on, on most plays. But when he breaks into the secondary, that can spell trouble for opposing defenses. That was a slippery run. First and 10 from the 48. Colombo had a good drive last time. Passes to Johnson, that is right off the fingertips and a ball he should haul in. Yeah, definitely can't put the blame on Colombo that time. I mean, the throw might be a tad high for normal throws, but still, regardless, the ball that even the five foot eight, 165, DeAndre Johnson should uh, reel in. You know, there's an old rule that if you get two hands on it, you definitely have to catch the football. And, uh, you know, Johnson wasn't able to do it that time. Second down and 10 from the 48. Williams, the lone man in the backfield. They'll bunch three wide to the left. Colombo throws to the second man. That's Dylan Goff, the tight end. He has a first down out to the Spartan 35 before Calhoun takes him down. Yeah, and there, that's like another guy that they like to utilize in this pass offense, and they probably use the tight end a little bit more than the Spartans do. But Goff, a pretty good athlete himself, six foot, 200 pounds in his fourth year. He's got a pretty good chemistry going with the fellow senior, Paul Colombo, especially on that little out route. Scored a touchdown against Bethany. The senior had two receptions last week for 30 yards. The motion man is Anthony Goldman. Now the other motion man is Goff. Hand off to Williams on first down. Gets the edge and slips his way to another first down. That's a an 11 yard run for Zaire Williams. You know what, Andrew, just going based off of what we've seen in the first quarter and two and a half minutes or so, I would say that he's probably their best athlete. And you know, going forward, if there's gonna be one guy that the Spartans are gonna put a lot of emphasis on in terms of trying to slow him down, that's the guy right there. That, that, that guy has the ability to burst into the secondary. Goff now motions to the left side of the formation on first down again. Williams on the handoff, Techman gets there first. And then the bear hug coming in second from, look like Andrew Benathy. I just love the fact that on the Spartans defense that seven of their 11 players on the field right now are seniors. I mean, this is not really gonna get as much more experienced of a group as you possibly can. So definitely good to see for that reason that the Spartans have had success and, and senior group is gonna do a lot for them. Now five wide, but they will keep it. Colombo dives forward to the 15 yard line, one shy of the first down. You know, and Colombo has a really good first step. It really doesn't take him long uh, to really go from zero to 60 on that last play. He's got really good speed, and if you let him get to the second level, he'll have that as well. Flag thrown on the near side by the head linesman, David McGee. Third and one from the 15. Johnson and Paulinelli on the near side. Cox on the far side. Williams in the backfield with Goff, the tight end to the left of the formation. Third and one. 
21-7, Spartans on top. 11 minutes left in the half. Colombo keeps it. Did he get enough on forward progress? Initial hit was made and it looked like he was short. And then he had a second effort, stepped to the right and got the first down. Yeah, and it was a good second effort right there by Colombo. First initial hit, didn't look like he got there. Looked like a couple blue unis were able to stop him before, but was not down at that point of contact. So a great second try by Colombo keeps the drive alive for Westminster. First and 10 from the 14. Williams splits out to the left. Now an empty backfield set. Colombo will run it. Kicks it back to the middle, met by Techman. Or by McMahon, excuse me. And that's once again the leading tackler, McMahon, has had a really good game. He had that good stop at the, uh, the goal line earlier the first time that we saw Westminster in the red zone and comes up with another big stop, forcing just a gain of one. Ten minutes left to go in the first half. Case up by two touchdowns, Westminster hanging in there. Goff motions, Colombo drops back. Good blitz pickup by Zaire Williams, but the flag flies. Colombo starts to run to the left edge. He'll get out of bounds, but I think that's holding on Zaire Williams. I would agree with you right there as well. Gonna be a pretty easy call. It may even be in the picture right in here. And the flag came almost instantaneously with that hold. There it is, Jacques Tacquar, the head referee, says yes, holding on Zaire Williams. That'll back Westminster up. That's a killer. Well, and it just hurts when it comes from, you know, a star running back. I mean, you kind of just expect a guy of that uh, athleticism and talent to be able uh, to also be able to hold your block against a smaller guy, but every now and then, um, you know, it'll force that penalty. Second and 19, backed up to the 23. Colombo looks to run again. No chance. McMahon got there first, Ian Henderson finished it off. Third down. You know, and it appears, Andrew, that most of these runs by Westminster as a quarterback scrambler, that most of them do appear to be designed, at least at, at this point. So. You know, maybe they're just seeing something in the Spartans' defense or they're just trying to exploit it, you know, with the quarterback run. But thus far, it isn't gaining them much, and they'll have to definitely draw up some kind of pass play here on third and 16. This was a good drive by Colombo and his Titans offense for a while. It has slowed down. Williams on the handoff. Henderson gets in there to help on the stop. That'll get him down to the 15. Williams now pulled from the pile, it looked like, by McMahon, who may not have heard the whistle, but it's fourth down. In a fairly conservative play call on third and long for Westminster, that would seem to suggest to me that they've got some pretty good uh, confidence and faith in their field goal kicking unit, so they will try it from distance. From the right hash, it will be an attempt of about 32 yards for John Sybach. Hold is down from Paulinelli. Sybach's kick is good. So they come away with points, 21 to 10. The Spartans leading West, uh, Westminster College with under eight minutes left to go in the first half at DeSanto Field. Anova Living is a modern, amenity-rich residential community located in Cleveland's Greater University Circle neighborhood, offering studio, one, and two-bedroom apartment homes. Enjoy all-inclusive living with convenient on-site shopping, 24-hour concierge services, a 24-hour fitness center, resident lounge, and more. All within close proximity to Case Western Reserve University. Anova Living online at anovaliving.com. Case Western Reserve University 21, Westminster College 10. 
the number one defense in the PAC against the number two defense in the PAC, Eddie, hasn't seemed to matter. No, it really hasn't. A uh, fast start for Case Western Reserve, especially in the running game with number 23, Jacob Burke. Calhoun receives the kick from Chiquillo. Looking to create something, he'll get out to the 29 yard line. Or thereabouts. Spartans to start with it. With 7.45 left to go in the first half. Jacob Burke leading the way for this offense. Let's see if he can keep it going. He has 75 rushing yards, needs 20 more or 2,000 in his Case Western Reserve career. Wouldn't be bad to get it on senior day. Kuda will take this one on the option read. Gets away from one tackle, and it takes a team to drag him down after a gain of nearly seven. You know, I think Rob Kuda just wants opposing defenses not to forget that he is very capable as a quarterback scrambler and a mobile threat, even though his total number of carries are down from a season ago. Definitely wants to send a reminder every now and then just to keep the defense honest. Second and three from the 36. Three wide set, Aguilar and Burke in the backfield. The give is to Burke. Gets away from a tackle in the backfield. He is free down the left sideline. Jacob Burke stays in bounds and goes down inside the 30. That's 2,000 yards rushing on Jacob Burke's Spartans career and a first down. Yeah, he needed 20 and I think he got 30, maybe 35. And you see that first stiff arm, that is what made that whole play work and was able to stay in bounds and probably pick up 10 more after he came close to the sideline right there. But uh, the, the ability to use his off arm for Jacob Burke to evade would-be tacklers has really been an asset to his running game. So now they will say he went out of bounds at the 39-yard line. First down and 10 from the 39. The give is to Burke again, up the middle to the 34. Sorry, that was Miles Anthony on the give. His first carry of the day. He's still in the backfield with Aguilar there as well. Kudo will look to throw. He goes to the end zone. Touchdown, Luke DeFrancesco. Just a classic case of winning a one-on-one -on -one matchup. DeFrancesco had his man beat. Had a little bit of space to work with on the outside and look at that pocket. That's just a picture perfect setting for Kuda to throw a bomb to the end zone and Spartans get their first score of the first half through the air. And it was a BB from Kuda. It is a senior party today. Burke, three touchdowns, over 2,000 yards rushing in his career, 100 on the day, but a penalty flag on the PAT. Looks like they want to signal false start. Nope, offside. Looked like the head linesman, David McGee, was saying false start. Shock to Quar overrules him. I just find, found it kind of hard to picture that a little move by a, an offensive lineman could have triggered three defenders <laughs> moving all at once. Uh, and didn't quite buy it right there. Penalty against Wentzmister. Carney all on the kick. True as he has always been. Spartans up 28 to 10. And as we were saying, a senior party. Rob Kuda, 99 yards passing and a touchdown. He's a senior. Jacob Burke, 100 yards rushing, now 2,005 on his career, averaging over nine yards a carry and three scores. He's a senior. Luke DeFrancesco, who came back from the injury last year. What do you know? He's a senior. He has a touchdown today. So many seniors. How many was it? 23, something in the 20s? 23. I mean, we talked about the uh, just the overall talent uh, that this group had and, and you know, this this Spartan staff, uh, bravo for uh, getting this recruiting class in here. 
uh, in 2013, and they knew right away uh, that they were going to be a really special group and a special unit. Just so many names uh, throughout the four years that have made huge impacts on this team, and it's really gotten this program to a whole nother level. The kick is to Zaire Williams, fields it at the 10. He'll take it out to the right, gets away from one tackle, and then dragged down. Williams got tangled up a little bit there. Techman, Calhoun in on the stop. Aguilar there as well. And Zaire Williams really seems to be fitting of uh, you know that uh, position that they have him listed as kind of a utility guy, a guy that can just do it all. They just want to get him the ball in his hands no matter what uh, the situation. So no surprise there that they try to go to him in the uh, return game because he once again is just their best and most dominant athlete. The Spartans offense answering the field goal right after they had answered the touchdown. And so now they pull away to an 18 point lead under six to play in the first half. They give to Dominique McKinley. Boy, does he want to have a good game. Gets out past the 35 before he's taken down. Adrian Cannon on the stop. Yeah, big hole right in between the uh, right guard and right tackle. That's Brady Hogue and Blake Gamble. Had some daylight right there. Fortunately, the Spartans were able to plug it up before too much more damage was done, but it does result in a Westminster first. Told you about McKinley. Had a good game last year against the Spartans, 133 yards rushing to lead the game. But then the big fumble at the end of that game on a drive that could have resulted in a Westminster leading and perhaps winning touchdown. So a chance for redemption for him this year, trying to spoil Case's perfect year. McKinley on the run again, patiently looking for a hole. He'll get it. Yeah, that was a key word right there was patience. An excellent job by Dominic, Dominic McKinley. And you really don't want your running back to hit that hole with authority on every time, assuming that that hole isn't there. If you make the adjustment and show the agility to be able to go to the hole wherever it shifts to, I think that's what McKinley, what enabled him to get more yardage there, pickup of six. Second and four from the 42. Handoff is to McKinley. Again shows patience, but the hole never opens. Stop made by Alex Habib. I think that's the option that the Spartans would rather have uh, in that case. Just do not let that running back get beyond the line of scrimmage right there. And if now if they can start doing that with Zaire Williams, they'd really be in business. But you know, that 3-4 scheme so good at plugging up holes, and if they are there, they're not there very long. No surprise that Ian Henderson helped out on that tackle as well. No gain, third and four. Pressure coming from Cannon. They pass to Williams in the flat. Now he has tons of running room into Spartan territory. Stiff arms at the 30 and has a first down. Well, it was an all-out blitz on the Spartans' part, so everybody comes right at the quarterback and he's able to get rid of it just in time. You see a lot of Spartan players applying pressure right there, but then the lone Zaire Williams, all kinds of running room, and that is uh, not what you want to allow him to do. Kevin Chrisis rides him out, but takes a hand to the face. First and 10 from the 32 yard line, where they'll spot it. Three wide for Colombo. McKinley the lone setback. The give is to McKinley. Up the middle, Henderson wraps him up and pushes him back. This has been just such a great year of growth for Ian Henderson. I mean, this defense was able to do a lot more things defensively this season with the big uh, nose guard right in there, 6'6", 340 pounds in his third year. Probably the most improved player on the Spartans team this season. Remember, he's only a junior, so he'll be back next year. And might be the most impact defensive lineman in the conference. Second and seven. Colombo looking to pass, looking left all the way, too far looking for Bryson Paulinelli. Incomplete. Yeah, and Henderson and Cam Brown and Dan Techman, they have been a very big reason as to why, at least early in the first quarter, why Colombo did not have the comfortability that he has had. Uh, all season long. I mean, at least in the first 15 minutes of the game, that offensive line for Westminster didn't quite look like it typically did, does, although they are starting to make adjustments. 
They've been such a good offensive line this year, second fewest sacks allowed in the conference. Colombo looking to pass, has time. Williams makes the catch. Benathy on the tackle. The initial hit was made by Habib. He tried to stick Williams and couldn't bring him down. Well, this was a first down that Westminster really needed, but they do decide to go with a shorter throw. And I think that the hope was that Williams uh, would have been able to get the first down on his own and try to pick up some yardage after the catch, but the Spartans did not allow him to do that. And now an interesting formation here by Westminster. Fourth and two, the Wildcat comes out again. Kim fakes the handoff, hit in the backfield, turnover on downs. Zach Lyon got there first. Well, the Spartans saw that three times on the last red zone possession by Westminster, so they're familiar with it by now. And, you know, guys like Cody Calhoun and all the seniors on this team, they are really, really good at making in-game adjustments. It's almost as if, if they see it once or twice, they're almost going to be a perfectionist at it. So the Spartans able to get the stop there and put an end to another Westminster drive. That read by Lyon was terrific, and he made a quick step to get around the left guard, Colin Reese, and make the tackle. Kuda, flags fly on the... First down snap, they'll start on the 26 and move backwards on the false start. Spartans have definitely done a good job keeping their composure today, just their second penalty here in the first half. And that's definitely what you expect out of a, a very veteran group, especially um, on the offensive line with seniors such as Dean Marinas, Blair, and Merlau. 2.14 left to go in the first half, Spartans by 18. Has a four wide set with Kuda in the backfield. Fakes the pass to the flat, steps away from pressure, rolls out right. Kuda will take off with it and he will get one yard. Well, that's Rob Kuda just making the best of not a great situation because the coverage deep down the field, pretty good from the secondary on Westminster's part. I know Kuda wanted to to go to the near side of the field all along. I think that was the, the plan for that play, but wasn't able to do it and kept the play alive. Excuse me, more than one yard. He gets one yard past what was the original line of scrimmage before the penalty. Second and nine from the 27. Now he'll step up once again, this time taken down by Tyler Beatrice, the senior out of Monica, Pennsylvania. Third down and manageable. It'll be third and about six. Timeout for Westminster with 145 left to go in the first half. And this is a big first down for the Titans defense who now only has one timeout left. Yeah, I definitely wanted to get a stop. I think they definitely would have preferred to convert their own um, you know, fourth down situation uh, when they had the ball inside the Spartan 30 in the previous drive. But you know, this is a, a defense for Westminster that you know, they played a little bit uncharacteristically uh, here in this first half. You know, this is only a defense that averages only about 17 and a half points a game. And the Spartans have almost nearly doubled that uh, here in the first 30 minutes. So they're playing a little bit out of character, um, you know, but a good, good call there to get a timeout. Huge play coming up for them. They have to get this stop. But if the Spartans uh, are able to convert here, you know, they'll set themselves up for another uh, run at a score before the half. Very important for Case, or rather very important for Westminster to get this stop and try to get points before the end of the first half because Case gets the ball back at the start of the second half. Kuda will adjust the coverage after the hard count. Three down linemen, four wide for the Spartans. Burke on the blitz pickup. Kuda over the middle, first down, past midfield. Giuseppe Orsini makes the grab. He cuts all the way across the middle. Well, you get all the big named wide receivers going deep, and then you have one guy just going with a slant route in the open field. Now Burke on the handoff. They'll just melt the clock away. He'll get a couple. Taken down by John Fitzgerald. 6'2", 270-pound junior out of Youngstown, Ohio. 
And a timeout again taken by Westminster. That is rather taken by Case, their first. So the Spartans will take this timeout and I guess decide what they want to do. You're in a, a part of the field where you can go for points here or you can bleed the clock away. Knowing the Spartans and knowing how aggressive that they do like to be, uh, you know, 90 seconds is, is really an eternity for them and you have a couple timeouts as well, even after this one at your uh, disposure here. So that would be, you know, my gut feeling that the Spartans are definitely gonna try to, to put more points on the board and apply more pressure uh, on Westminster here before the half. Definitely have the tools to do it. How quickly things have changed from two plays ago where Westminster was calling the timeout to stop the clock and try for points. Now the Spartans will do the same. Second and seven with 1.30 to go in the first half. Case up 28 to 10, trying to tack on. Hurd is the motion man. Kuda steps up, big blitz coming. Kuda gets away and throws it away. He got sandwiched on that play in between Austin Chin and Bobby Noble. And Andrew, that definitely changes things quite a bit here because now you've got third and seven, and if you throw the ball again and the clock stops, maybe that's enough time for Westminster to take a couple chances deep down the field if they were to get the ball back. But you know the, the, the fact that the clock stopped here on third down, really a, a game changer, at least on this possession. Third and seven, 123 left to go in the first half. Kuda will pass. He will look, now he will tuck and run, seeing no options. He won't get the first out near the 40. Tackle made by Bill Medea, the junior out of Pittsburgh. So fourth down and three to go. What's the call? They won't stop the clock just yet but I have a feeling that the Spartans will let this go all the way down. Play clock's at 15, they'll probably just call the timeout or take the penalty and punt it away. Quinn Salwan and the punt unit is huddled around Greg Debelak. The head coach looking for his 100th win and he will call the timeout with 35 seconds left. It is the Spartans' second called timeout. And so Westminster will receive the punt They'll have about 30 seconds to work with, depending on the distance of the punt and the distance of the return. This return is going to be very important, and this is a Westminster team, Eddie, that does very well in punt returns. In fact, the Spartans had to have a meeting exclusively to talk about the punt return game and how good Westminster is and how they can contain them in coverage. Yeah, and those types of meetings definitely don't happen very often, but it was necessary uh, to game plan properly for Westminster. Now, I think for Case here, it's going to be interesting to see if they felt more confident that they could pin it inside the 20 with the ball um, resting at the 40-yard line, or if they wanted to take the penalty, they could put it back to the 45, maybe give the punter a little bit more room to work with, but they're going to go with it from the 40, so they'll try to uh, pin pocket it here in the punting game. Paul Anelli back at his own 10. Salwan has eight punts this year that have rested inside the 20. This will be one of them. Paul Anelli makes the fair catch at about the 18-yard line. 28 seconds left to go in the first half, and a long way to traverse for Paul Colombo and Westminster. Definitely something that they have done time and time again. But the thing is, in the first half, Westminster has really relied so heavily on the run with Zaire Williams and Colombo also calling his own number. So if Westminster is going to come away with points here, not only are they going to have to do it really quick, but they're going to have to get some deep balls in there. They spread it four wide with Williams, the lone man in the backfield. The ball is spotted at the 20. Colombo. Steps up, throws over the middle. Good catch by Andre Johnson, by DeAndre Johnson, and a really nice pass by Colombo. First down, the clock will move when the chains are set. 22 seconds left. It's out to the 41. Clock running again inside 20 seconds, and the spike by Colombo stops the clock 
with 19 seconds remaining. Yeah, I think that was a Spartans defensive look on that last uh, play that was probably more so expecting a pass for the sideline. So that really opened things up across the middle. Andre Johnson, uh, DeAndre Johnson rather, on an island by himself. But the Spartans will definitely let that go because time is of the essence and not on Westminster's side. The Titans have one timeout left and that pass batted away by Dan Techman. Second down. And the versatility of Dan Techman just making life a, a lot easier for guys like Henderson and Brown. And Techman's a guy at the other defensive end position at just 5'11 and 220 that can do so much. He can stop the run. He can bat passes down, apply pressure to the quarterback, and is also pretty good uh, you know, in coverage should he need to play that. Third down and 10 from the 41. Remember, they had spiked on the first play after the first down. Pass behind Paul Anelli. He drops it. 11 seconds left. Fourth and 10. And it looks like the punting unit will come out. Yeah, and it's been a kind of an uncharacteristic day for senior quarterback Paul Colombo. Hasn't particularly stayed true to his numbers Typically a guy who completes his passes at well over 60%, but not quite the same story today. The punter, senior Joe Salmon, fan back at his own 40. Salmon gets away a side winding punt that will take a couple of Westminster bounces. And we'll come to a halt at the 19, doesn't matter. Zeros on the clock and we go into halftime with the Spartans leading Westminster College 28 to 10. <laughs> 